നമുക്കൊരു കാര്യം ചെയ്യാം അദ്ദേഹം അല്പ ലേറ്റ് ആകുകയാണെങ്കിൽ ഇൻട്രൊഡക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ദി മൊഡ്യൂൾസ് നമുക്ക് അതുകൂടെ അങ്ങ് കഴിച്ചേക്കാം അല്ലെ ഓഡിയോ <laughs> <laughs> A pleasant evening to one and two. Ambition is the first step to success and the second is action. The best way to predict the future is to create it. Abraham Lincoln. Yes, to pursue a good career is the dream of each and every professional. We need to create a bright future. For that, we need to set our goals and we have to frame our ambitions. Pharmacy is being such a noble and one of the highly paid profession in most of the foreign countries it may be the dream of many budding pharmacists to reach there and to set up a good career there but how to achieve it we may have several confusions inhibitions ignorance and many hindrances once again i am kindly requesting all the participants to mute your audio we need to have a road map or we have to frame an effective guidance to achieve all our dreams with the recognition to the need of such a guidance the oldest and the mother pharmacy professional organization of kerala kerala pharmacy graduates association kpga is organizing this webinar series to create an awareness among the pharma students and the professionals to achieve a good overseas career or research opportunities this webinar is organizing as different modules which allows the pharmacists to educate and to interact with the eminent professionals from various countries including united states of america canada united kingdom ireland and australia my dearest pharmacist fraternity let me introduce myself i am sonu benny phd research scholar amrita school of pharmacy amrita vishwavidya pedam kochi it is my fortune to be the master of ceremony at this auspicious occasion of the inauguration of this webinar series organized by KPGA with immense pleasure i would like to invite all of you to this gracious occasion hearty welcome one and all let's begin with a prayer song to seek blessings from god almighty now i invite ms adira sujadan nayar phd scholar amrita school of pharmacy to evoke the prayer song over to you adira may adira oh yes you are there shall be showers of blessing this is the promise of love there shall be seasons refreshing sent from the savior above showers of blessing showers of blessings we need mercy drops from the sun falling but for the showers we need there shall be showers of blessing precious reviving again over the hills and the valleys sound of abundance of rain showers of blessings showers of blessings we need mercy drops from the sun falling but for the showers we need showers of blessings showers of blessings we need mercy drops from the sun falling but for the showers we need 
Thank you so much, Adira. Words are the true expression of heart. With immense pleasure, let me invite Mr. Abdul Nasir Piyu, the Dynamic General Secretary of Kerala Pharmacy Graduate Association and the Production in Charge, Pradi Private Limited, Chalakudi, to welcome the gathering. Over to you, sir. A warm good evening to one and all. Respected Chairman of today's program, Dr. P. K. Sriyumar, sir. Chief Guest of today's program and the inaugurator, Sri Rojim John MLA. He is set to come. Respected invited speaker, uh, Mr. John Shamal, Dr. Krishna Omar, Dr. Nishit, other eminent personalities, dignitaries, participants, and dear students. It gives, it gives me immense pleasure and honor to welcome today's, uh, today's inaugural function of webinar series organized by Kerala Pharmacy Graduates Association. Students are the future citizens of the nation. KPGA proposed this program so as to enlighten budding pharmacists to know the abroad opportunities and build up a good career. Let me enter into my duty. First of all, I welcome Dr. P.K. Sriyumar, President of KPGA. Under his eminent leadership, KPJ could be able to do many activities. He is a multifaceted personality with a long vision. I wholeheartedly welcome Sri Umar sir to this uh, program. Thank you. Next, I welcome our uh, MLA. Mr. Roji M. John, he has not yet come, I think. We know that uh, he is hearing from the Angamali constituency of Arnavalam districts. He came into politics through students' politics, and he was a national president of NSU National Students Union. He is a young blood and very active in the public domain, and also he was very he is very active in state assembly. It is a matter of great that uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Roji M. John has raised the issue of PharmD students, sorry, PharmD graduates in Kerala State Assembly regarding their placement. I officially welcome Mr. Roji M. John to this program. Next, uh, I would like to welcome Mr. John Shamal, my dear friend, and uh, he is uh, presently working in New Jersey of United States of America. He is a true professional and a very humble person. We all are waiting to hear his words. I wholeheartedly welcome Mr. John Shamal to this program. Next, I welcome Dr. Krishnamar, Principal St. James College of Pharmacy. As we know, as he was the ex-general secretary of KPJ and presently he is the executive member of KPJ. Under his uh, leadership, a lot of programs uh, was conducted under the banner of KPJ. I wholeheartedly welcome Dr. Krishnamar to this program. Thank you, sir. Next is today's uh, moderator, uh, Dr. Manoj Kumar, Principal Dalewee College of Pharmacy. He is a true professional and a good academician. I extend my warm welcome to Dr. Manoj Kumar to this program. This is uh, Dr. Nishit you, MC. Dr. Nishit MC, Joint Secretary of KPGA. And also he is the person who worked behind this webinar series and making uh, for making this program a grand success. I extend my warm welcome to Dr. Nishat. Next, I welcome Ms. Sono Benni, who is the master of ceremony of this program. 
I welcome Sonu to this program. I take this opportunity to welcome Al Hasar Group of Institution who supported us in contributing advertisement to farm line of this edition. Finally, I extend my hearty welcome to all the eminent personalities, professionals, pharmacists, participants, and dear students who all are attending today's program. A warm welcome to all of you. Let me conclude my words. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. A good organizer is the foundation of success. It is my privilege to invite the backbone of Kerala Pharmacy Graduates Association, Dr. P.K. Shrikumar, President KPGA, and the former Deputy Drugs Controller of Kerala State Government for the Presidential Address. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Sonu. Uh, good evening to all. Uh, Honorable MLA of Angamali Constituency, uh, Sri Roji M. John, sir. General Secretary of KPGA, Sri Abdul Nasir. Respected uh, speaker of uh, today's webinar, Sri uh, John Samuel. Dr. Krishnakumar, Executive Member and former Secretary of uh, KPGA, who introduces about uh, uh, the various uh, modules in the series. Then moderator of the session, Dr. Manoj Kumar, uh, convener and joint secretary of association, Dr. Nishit, vibrant Sonu. Uh, a dear uh, members, participants, and my dear students, it is my great uh, privilege and honor to preside this great function, which aims to start directing or guiding the future pharmacists and budding pharmacists at least some of them are confused on uh, their future, in what way they have to contribute to the healthcare and from where. Our field is very vital. As we know, we are the, the, the I mean, experts of drug and Sanjeevani for, uh, for human beings. It is medicines. We all know uh, the KPGA is the oldest association of graduate pharmacists of Kerala. We started the, in 70s, you know, it is pretty old, by a group of very, very eminent personalities who actually struggled much for all of us. And still, their expertise and guidance prepared the present executive committee to continue the efforts to motivate and organize various programs for the pharmacist fraternity in the industrial, academics, then community health, clinical research, drug design, research and development, discovery, regulation, and so on. The executive members and the respected members of the association constantly engage, engaging in the professional activities. And of course, the new committee, which has started its activities by celebrating National Pharma Week celebrations in the last November. Of course, uh, profoundly, and the association is doing some background works for preparing this oil of Kerala, ideal for, for pharma industry. And we all know India is the largest provider of uh, generic drugs globally. Supplies over 50% of global demand for various vaccines and 40% of uh, generic demand in the US and 25% of all the medicines in the UK. Of course, globally, India ranks are uh, the third in terms of pharmaceutical production uh, by volume and 14th by value. This situation and the perception of new generation it's changed much and they are much ambitious and their vision always focuses globally. Thereby, I mean, many have the, the aim to go abroad for enriching themselves and nation uh, through exposure to the advancements across the board. Of course, uh, uh, there are uh, more than 4 million pharmacists in the world and 78% of pharmacy technicians are females. And uh, we, the, the Kerala, has a uh, lot of contributions 
to the outside nation also nations also see all of uh, us boosting the revenue of the pharmaceutical marketing around more than 1300 billion us dollars there are a lot of career options and there are a lot of designations pharmacy uh, dispenser clerk pharmacy assistant pharmacy technician chemotherapy pharmacy pharmacist then nuclear pharmacist long term care uh, pharmacist pharmacy manager pharmacy specialist pharmacist in charge health outcome pharmacist and so on pharmacologist uh, staff pharmacist director of pharmacy lot of designations are there and the job security flexible working excellent rewards transferable skills variety opportunities in new role settings and opportunities to specialize these are the characteristics of pharmacy profession once we are very passionate hard working and strategic enough means pharmacy offer a lot lucky we have many of the professions who work and doing business outside our guest speaker is one of the examples that we can proudly present many countries we can depend on our professional needs research activities and lively with this in mind the kpj has formulated an action plan and a series of simple webinars for catering the need of future pharmacists and the inauguration by our honorable mla will definitely line with the entire webinar session dear participants uh, dr krishna <laughs> kumar will definitely uh, give an idea about the modules and please uh, participants please make use of all the webinars in the series and be a part of kpj another important matter is the release of formline the official publication of kpj in which you will get a deep insight in the history of pharmacy through this edition in kerala in various fields thank you sudesh sir nasir bobby and other members of editorial board who could complete the task in time and the executive members of kpj definitely uh, mm-hmm. the form line will reach to you through your college and once again thank you mla sir and thank you all wishing the entire program a very great success and happy new year and republic day to all thank you thank you so much sri kumar sir for your inspiring words a webinar series on overseas opportunities for pharma students what does it exactly meant for to know more about it let's listen to a wonderful organizer and a great teacher of pharma fraternity dr k krishna kumar principal st james college of pharmacy chalakudi with utmost respect i welcome you sir for the introduction of modules over to you sir thank you sonu a very good evening to one and all uh, our uh, president of today's function dr k s r kumar sir and the former deputy con- the drugs controller of the state and the honorable secretary our nasir sir and the uh, our inaugurator that uh, honorable Uh, MLA Roji M. John, uh, Ankamali constituency, and the resource person of the day, our John Samuel sir, then our uh, uh, Dr. Manoj, uh, the principal of Dale View College, he is the introduce of uh, the resource person and the moderator, and uh, of course our joint secretary, Nishit sir, uh, he is the uh, drug, senior drug inspector, Uh, and he is the main backbone of the organizing this uh, webinars uh, and the most important elements of today's uh, uh, the students the budding pharmacist and the kpg members thank you very much uh, for this uh, evening and uh, uh, today i have immense pleasure uh, to be a part and parcel of a series of webinar which uh, is uh, uh, overseers job opportunities and career development and uh, uh, we all know in our country the apex body is pharmacy council of india and in the 2015 onwards the pharmacy profession the uh, pharmacy council of india has made a uniform syllabus and it is implemented from 2016 onwards so our b pharm course as well as the pharm d pharm dpb and m pharm all are have the uniform syllabus 
and also the uniform pattern of examination. And in our country, we are following the theoretical as well as the practical knowledges uh, that uniformity is throughout all the states of our country. And we, with our syllabus and with our practical knowledge, we very well know about the job opportunity Uh, but we are not that much aware, even our budding pharmacists and our students are not that much aware of the job opportunities and career development of our of abroad, overseas and the different countries. And this is the right time as well as the right topic of the day. Our KPGA uh, team has organized and decided uh, the job opportunities and the career development of the various countries like USA, Canada, UK, Ireland, and uh, the uh, different Gulf countries, uh, uh, Australia, etc. So it is a series of webinars. Each country, why they design in that way, each country, the procedures or the pathways are various. to country to country and also the examination pattern to enter into the country and what are the minimum professional requirements and some countries even now uh, they have prefer the PharmD graduates PharmD especially US and other things but otherwise we have to undergo some type of bridge courses over there so like that each resource persons can easily with their exposure, with their experiences, they can easily give you the ideas regarding the, which that country prefers what, what are the pathways, what are the procedures to be taken, what are before we are going if any need of IELTS exams and all these type of procedures they will explain to you. The designing of this KPGA, the webinars by the KPGA team, it is one hour. In that 45 minutes, the resource persons will talk and the other 15 minutes, the interactions. And even though, if you are not able to interact with them at the time of the webinar, they here we are giving the mail IDs through the help of the APGA team and all the participants can very well uh, get the ideas and the experiences of the country even after the webinar. And uh, here, other uh, thing, we are deciding that one from January to June of uh, this year. And every first and the third Sundays, uh, we are uh, designing that particular seminar and that is webinar that is only one hour. And uh, uh, each day uh, that we will give the link to you in earlier uh, and we will follow the same and we have already designed up to March. And the, after the March, during that time, we will design the other thing and we will give to you. And today, uh, we are uh, having the first seminar. This is the main uh, the resource person is, we have already mentioned, that is John Samuel, sir. Uh, his, uh, his topic, he is pursuing the pharmacy profession in USA. And he will explain to you regarding, uh, with uh, his experiences, regarding the opportunities and career development. And uh, whatever the things may be, it is little bit vary from our country. Even uh, all the uh, career development there, if you are going and joining for any type of a courses, maybe one year or two years, they are mainly practical oriented. We will get enough time to go for the part-time jobs too. So don't worry about the financial conditions and other things that the speakers through their help, their guidelines, you will get it. So uh, what our uh, Sri Kumar sir told you, you should not miss any webinars because it's a series and country to country, all these uh, type of the pathways, the procedures varies. So first, all our budding pharmacists should uh, think about after hearing or attending all these webinars, we have to locate one particular country and where we want to go and which type of a course it's for a career development or for a job, all these things that you have to 
take care then we have to stick on for that particular country then our pathways should start so this the kpga team is uh, wishing from or uh, it's our desire from each uh, various budding pharmacists or to attend this webinar and our uh, second webinar is to how to become a registered pharmacist in canada this is by shiba and our that will be on uh, 6th february and that is the first sunday and our third webinar series is explaining the career the trajectories that means the pathways of the academic and the non academic pathways in us that is by the dr prasant nadungadi that is on uh, 20th february that is the third sunday so each procedures and each pathways academic and non non academic and also as a registered pharmacist all these things to country to country it varies and what are the different types of examination we have to face what are how many times we can write and uh, for the all these procedures even in the interactive session or the other sessions you can uh, interact with your uh, resource persons and the fourth webinar which we have designed the opportunities in global clinical research for the pharmacy graduates so even uh, in india uh, what all the clinical research developments which we have so that is in india that we know very well so the opportunities in global that is uh, he may cover all the uh, countries job opportunities as a clinical research uh, that is uh, the resource person is mr dinesh that we are uh, designing on 6th march so they, these are the uh, way of the seminars even in the clinical research sir already uh, presidential address sir has pointed out the our uh, pharmacy profession is having a various different types of uh, opportunities and different fields uh, so this is a, a part of a practicing pharmacy so that is a clinical research and as a clinical pharmacist Uh, we are doing that work also that is uh, developing even in our country too and the fifth webinar uh, that we are designing is the broad view on australia the pharmacy profession of the various roles of pharmacists uh, and the career opportunities pathway involved and the study options so in australia uh, compared to the other countries it's little bit various Uh, uh, varied and also the different types of examinations and another uh, interesting one which we have to note in this series the country to country the examinations varies the procedures varies at the same time type one from one country to move to the other country also we have to again appear for the other examination of that particular country it belong to and also the various procedures too so uh, with this uh, uh, short objective i am concluding uh, this particular session and uh, i take this opportunity uh, to congratulate the kpga team for organizing this particular uh, webinar because all our budding pharmacists aim after the course what to do where to go which uh, course even we could go for our higher studies so that give a result after this uh, seminar we will get a result to select our own pathways of our with our budding pharmacists and the second one uh, i uh, wholeheartedly thanks uh, to on behalf of all our uh, pharmacy fraternity so this is the right time to act and to select uh, the particular topic because all our final year examinations so for all the courses are uh, coming up it is in the march and april may it's going to finish so this is the right time to uh, think about uh, the higher studies as well as the job opportunities so uh, that uh, by the help of the organizers of kpga uh, especially the president dr apk sri kumar sir nasir sir and dr nishit sir and uh, all other uh, committee members uh, of the office bearers of this team so thank you very much uh, for once again had to given me an opportunity to uh, introduce this webinar series to our budding pharmacists thank you sir so our uh, mla uh, he may join later 
and uh, i think better we can uh, go to our session sir ml le vilichirunnu 5 minutes annaanu parnadhu appo enikku thonna nammude ee module inu padathad module introduce cheythu kayumba ml 5 minutes annu parnu pa okay let us uh, i think um, let us, the the moderator him uh, give some brief introduction yes, about sir. the uh, uh, that yes, would be sir. better i think so yes, no sir. yeah thank you so no yes sir uh, you can move it here we begin with the first session of this webinar series pursuing pharmacy profession in the united states of america we have an eminent speaker with us mr john samuel director pharmacy operations memorial hermann hospital texas us to guide us to the pharma horizons of us at this juncture it is my privilege to welcome our moderator of the session dr p manoj kumar principal delhi college of pharmacy and research center trivandrum dr p manoj kumar has completed his b pharm from government college of pharmacy bangalore and m pharm from shri ramakrishna institute of paramedical sciences coimbatore he is awarded with phd in pharmaceutical sciences from dr mgr medical university tamil nadu dr manoj has started his career as a lecturer at vidyadhiraja pharmacy college trivandrum and had worked with fullford india limited affiliate of shing pluff usa followed by the teaching experience gained from his alma mater sri ramakrishna institute of paramedical sciences coimbatore sir has guided several post graduate and phd research scholars and currently serving as the peer reviewer of a couple of national and international journals he authored various research publications of national and international reputation and presented scientific papers in several national conferences he has been the resource person for several invited talks and chaired the scientific session in several conferences and seminars with utmost respect i invite you sir to introduce the speaker and to moderate the session over to you sir thank you ms uh, sona benny for those kind words you had shared about me am i audible yes sir you are audible sir yeah. thank you most respected uh, dignitaries on this uh, very auspicious platform beloved speaker mr john samuel dear fellow pharmacists we are all present on this platform to understand the various aspects related to the theme pursuing pharmacy profession in the united states of america before i invite honorable speaker to deliver the talk it's my humble duty to introduce the speaker to the elite gathering sir uh, can we go ahead with the presentation sir shri kumar sir yes yes manoj please please yeah mr john samuel had completed his b pharm from kem college of pharmacy in madurai he went on to obtain a masters in pharmacy from billa institute of science and technology pilani john samuel immigrated to the united states in 1993 and continued his pharmacy career there starting as a pharmacy technician he was able to complete all the necessary formalities by 1995 in order to be registered as a pharmacist in the state of texas and has been a registered pharmacist since then john samuel went on to complete his master of science in pharmacy administration from the university of houston and later a master of business administration from texas women's university he has worked in retail pharmacy office infusion home healthcare but spent most of his career in hospital pharmacy he has been a preceptor for pharmacy students and residents and continue to maintain his preceptor license he is a proud father of two daughters and now a proud grandfather too he is looking forward to retirement and spending more time with his family currently mr john samuel is the director of pharmacy operations at the memorial herman hospital in the prestigious texas medical center in houston texas with this brief introduction i request mr john samuel a very experienced and honorable speaker to deliver the presentation over to you sir thank you very much and um, i appreciate this opportunity given to me 
to share my experience and also to share with the students as well as the esteemed um, faculty that I see in front of me um, about the opportunities that the pharmacists have in the United States and the profession of pharmacy in the US. Feel free to stop me anytime when uh, the MLA gets here. Um, I know we were expecting him um, to do his part. So I'm, I'm okay if you have to stop me for a little bit, that's okay. So just um, um, give me a, a, some sort of a notification so I can stop um, uh, for the uh, MLA to uh, do his part. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to um, share my screen and go over uh, the slide presentation that I have for you. Excuse me, sir. Uh, our honorable MLA has joined now. Okay, good. Join. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so no, you can just uh, just invite him. Okay. Okay, sir. Please. A true leader should be the one who stands for the betterment of the public lives all the time. And today, we are so blessed to have such a great leader with us to inaugurate this webinar series. It is none other than Mr. Roji M. John, Honorable MLA from Angamali. To be brief about our chief guest of the day, Mr. Roji M. John was an activist and a strong member of Kerala Students' Union from his student life onwards. He was the former chairman of SH College Tevara during his graduation, and he has completed his post-graduation from University of Hyderabad, followed by Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. He was then elected as the counselor of JNU Students' Union in 2005, National Students' Union of India, NSUI Secretary in 2006, and Vice President in 2008. Successfully, he accomplished the task of effective organization and coordination of all the activities of NSUI in various states and thus elected and rose to the level of National Vice President in 2011 and National President of Student Wing of Indian National Congress in 2014. This young efficient leader was then elected as a member of Legislative Assembly of Kerala from Angamali in the year of 2016 and again re-elected in 2021, which shows the faith of the public in his abilities. With much happiness and respect, on behalf of KPGA and the entire pharma fraternity, let me invite this enthusiastic young leader, Mr. Roji M. John, to inaugurate this webinar series and to release the farm line. With much respect and happiness, over to you, sir. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yes, sir, you're audible. Please. Oh, OK, you. thank you. APGA uh, State President uh, Dr. P.K. Uh, Srikumar, uh, General Secretary uh, Mr. Abdul Nasser P.U., uh, Sunny Radikina, but Bhumana Patavish Director Dr. K. Krishnumar Sir, as well as the name of the class in the QNI, Eti Chirina, Eti Chirina, Eti Chirina, Mr. John Samuel, as well as the Vishish Director Association, Mr. Barwa, Igle Prima Lore, Elor Namaskara. Uh, I got stuck in another program. Extremely sorry for the delay. Uh, 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 webinar in the uh, Kerala Pharmacy Graduates Association. Kerala uh, 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 Kerala Desam on the Chartola and Makotri are present in the Nelkunukaria, Uru Doctor Padanabola than Ne, or MBBS Doctor Padikin of the Bola than Ne, like the Nakal Kudal Same with the Uru family course Padicha, Portangana, Udio Artilke, Namula Sadarna and the Lail Mate, MBBS Doctor Mark Levikin of the Bola, Padigana, Namuk in the Namada Arogi Megali, Levikin of the Lagartilia, Asangente. Yangaka Ivish and the Imasabi like a Kundranate, Semichitola, Karanam. Namada Namakalaur Kamaria on the Dana, Kerlatil, a public service commercial Layalip, Matesarkar, Megalil Arugir and Gatumoke, Farm D Doctor Maradev Legal, Email Kudal Vaidik and Edit Lali Moka Seven, Libby Mark and the Palatarola Presentical Nalakia. With this Rajangal Prateja, Nikitono, clinical pharmacist, some of the 
ആ ഒരു 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 സ്ട്രീം തന്നെ ഡെവലപ്പ് ചെയ്ത് വന്നത് അമേരിക്കയിലും അതുപോലെ തന്നെ മറ്റു യൂറോപ്യൻ നാടുകളിലും ഒക്കെയാണ് അവരതിന്റെ പ്രാധാന്യം വളരെ നേരത്തെ തന്നെ തിരിച്ചറിയുകയും അതിന് ആവശ്യമായിട്ടുള്ള അർഹമായിട്ടുള്ള പരിഗണന നൽകിയാണ് മുന്നോട്ട് പോയിക്കൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്നത് നമുക്ക് ഡോക്ടർമാർ ആവശ്യമായിരിക്കുന്നത് പോലെ തന്നെ നമുക്ക് ക്ലിനിക്കൽ ഫാർമസിസ്റ്റുകൾ നമുക്ക് ഫാമിലി ഡോക്ടേഴ്സ് ഒക്കെ നമ്മുടെ ക്ലിനിക്കുകളിൽ നമ്മുടെ ആശുപത്രികളിൽ ആവശ്യമായിട്ടുള്ള സർക്കാർ മേഖലയിൽ ഉൾപ്പെടെ ആവശ്യമായിട്ടുണ്ട് അപ്പൊ തീർച്ചയായിട്ടും കൂടുതൽ പ്രവർത്തനങ്ങൾ നമുക്ക് എല്ലാ ഒറ്റക്കെട്ടായിട്ട് മുന്നോട്ട് പോകാം ഞങ്ങളുടെയൊക്കെ പിന്തുണ തുടർന്നും ഈ കാര്യത്തിൽ ഉണ്ട് എന്ന് മാത്രം ഞാൻ സൂചിപ്പിക്കുകയാണ് നിയമസഭയ്ക്കകത്തായാലും പുറത്തായാലും ഒക്കെ ഫാർമസി ഗ്രാജുവേറ്റ്സുമായി ബന്ധപ്പെട്ടു കൊണ്ടിട്ടുള്ള വിഷയങ്ങൾ തുടർന്നും ഉയർത്തിക്കൊണ്ട് വരാനൊക്കെ ഞങ്ങളെ പോലുള്ളവരൊക്കെ തയ്യാറാണ് എന്ന് മാത്രം ഈ അവസരത്തിൽ സൂചിപ്പിക്കുകയാണ് ഇത് ഇന്നിവിടെ നടക്കുന്നത് ഒരു ഒരു സെമിനാറാണ് പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് വിദേശത്തേക്കുള്ള നമ്മുടെ അവസരങ്ങളെ സംബന്ധിച്ച് ഇന്ന് നമ്മുടെ സ്വാഭാവികമായിട്ടും നമ്മുടെ നാട്ടിലെ അവസരങ്ങൾ നിഷേധിക്കപ്പെടുമ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് പുറത്തേക്കുള്ള അവസരങ്ങൾ നോക്കേണ്ടതായിട്ട് വരുന്നുണ്ട് നമ്മൾ ഒത്തിരിയേറെ ആളുകൾ ഒരു സ്വപ്നമായിട്ട് വിദേശത്തേക്ക് ഒരു ജോലി എന്നുള്ളത് കൊണ്ടു നടക്കുന്ന ഒരു കാലഘട്ടമാണ് പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് ഇന്ന് കോവിഡ് മഹാമാരിയുടെ ഒക്കെ പശ്ചാത്തലത്തിൽ ഒത്തിരിയേറെ പ്രതിസന്ധികൾ വിദേശ പഠനത്തിനായാലും ജോലിക്കായാലും ഒക്കെ അനുഭവപ്പെടുന്ന ഒരു കാലഘട്ടമാണ് അപ്പോൾ ഇന്നത്തെ ആ പ്രതിസന്ധികളും അതുപോലെ തന്നെ സാധ്യതകളും ഒക്കെ ചർച്ച ചെയ്യുവാനായിട്ട് ഇതുപോലൊരു ഒരു വെബിനാർ പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് മേഖലയിൽ കൂടുതൽ പ്രവൃത്തി പരിചയമുള്ള എക്സ്പേർട്ട്സിനെ കൊണ്ടുവന്നിട്ട് ഇതുപോലൊരു സെമിനാറും ഒക്കെ വളരെ നല്ലൊരു ഇനീഷ്യേറ്റീവ് ആണ് ഈ സംരംഭത്തിന് ഈ പരിപാടിക്ക് എല്ലാവിധ ഭാവങ്ങളും നേരുന്നു തുടർന്നും ഫാർമസി ഗ്രാജുവേറ്റ്സിന്റെ വിഷയങ്ങളുമായി ബന്ധപ്പെട്ടുകൊണ്ട് ഞങ്ങളുടെയൊക്കെ എല്ലാവിധ പിന്തുണയും ഉണ്ടാകും എന്ന് മാത്രം ഒരിക്കൽ കൂടി സൂചിപ്പിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് ഈ പരിപാടിയിലേക്ക് എന്നെ ക്ഷണിച്ചതിന് സംഘാടകരോടുള്ള നന്ദി പ്രത്യേകമായിട്ട് അറിയിക്കുന്നു എല്ലാവരുടെ ഇതിന്റെ ഉദ്ഘാടനം നിർവഹിക്കുന്നു അതോടൊപ്പം തന്നെ ഇതിന്റെ ഈ ന്യൂസ് ലെറ്ററിന്റെ റിലീസും പ്രത്യേകമായിട്ട് അറിയിക്കുന്നു ഇത് സാധാരണ നമ്മൾ റിലീസ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് പോലെ എങ്ങനെ റിലീസ് ചെയ്യുമെന്ന് അറിയില്ല എന്നാലും അതിന്റെ ഒരു പ്രഖ്യാപനം നടത്തുന്നു എല്ലാ നന്മയും നേരുന്നു നമസ്കാരം താങ്ക് യു സനോ റിക്വസ്റ്റ് മിസ്റ്റർ ജോൺ സാമുവൽ ടു കണ്ടിന്യൂ വിത്ത് പ്രസന്റേഷൻ Oh, thank you very much. I am sorry for uh, uh, disturbing your presentation, uh, Dr. John Samuel. Not at all. No, that's fine. Thank uh, you. I'm sorry, I wasn't aware that the presentation was on. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so let me see if I can share my screen. Uh, and let me know quickly if um, you cannot see it um, so i can get it started again yeah now it's uh, visible sir okay wonderful <clears throat> so there are many ways um to look into the professional pharmacy and everybody's experience is different and uh, what i want to do is to go over my experience um uh this is no okay. um my experience in pharmacy especially as a foreign pharmacist to complete this basic pharmacy education in india and immigrated to the us and got licensed as a registered pharmacist um so back in the day when i look back um there were not that many resources available i wanted to know uh, more about the professional pharmacy and um there were very few friends i had at that time who could give me some guidance um i was planning to come to the united states my visa was ready um so i just was trying to pursue the career here um so there were a lot of hurdles like getting a transcript and uh, and and getting all the documents ready so i can um get my credentials validated uh, for the examination that i needed to take here um but this day and age the internet is very useful tool and there's a lot of information that's available uh, 
And uh, I congratulate the, um, the um, office bearers of the KPGA for organizing a webinar series uh, for the students who want to make a decision to um, join or further their career in other areas outside of India, whether it's in the Gulf countries, um, um, United States, UK or Australia or any other places. So I think this is a great opportunity and I hope the students uh, take the best benefit of the webinar series. So the objective here is to go over my pursuit of the pharmacy career. And I'll go over the uh, pharmacy practice uh, from what I know, like I said earlier, the, the scope is pretty vast, as someone mentioned earlier about the, uh, the professional pharmacy. There's clinical pharmacy, retail pharmacy, and so many other uh, branches of pharmacy. And um, all of our experience can be very unique to a very uh, small branch of pharmacy. So similarly, mine is uh, mostly um, based on hospital pharmacy, and I will talk more about that. And um, also I will um, share what the foreign pharmacists need to do um, in order to get licensed. Um, so uh, as I proceed, let me go over the timeline of uh, what I have done um, for the last several decades. I got my bachelor's um, in pharmacy, B farm degree from KM, KM College of Pharmacy in Madurai, uh, that's under Madurai Cambridge University. Um, and soon after that, I got employed uh, with the Lupin Laboratories based out of uh, Bombay, but I was given the territory of Northern Kerala. So I'm very, very familiar with um, all the Northern districts, uh, which I had not traveled much before that point. Uh, but later, uh, once I was employed by Lupin, I was able to go from all the way from Trichur to uh, Kasargod, uh, the entire areas um, over there. So I got very familiarized with the northern part of Kerala. And then later I moved to um, Ahmedabad because a lot of my friends were working in um, manufacturing uh, industry. And a lot of my education was geared towards pharmaceutics. And so that fascinated me. And I went over there. Um, some of them were working in Torrent and Kerala. Sibla. Uh, so I joined in a small uh, farm over there called Dennis Chem Lab. And at that time, a couple of my friends were uh, studying at Berlin Institute of Technology. So I visited them and wanted to see if um, I could join BITS. And uh, I took an admission form from there and um, um, was fortunate to get admission there. And I completed my master's in pharmacy at Berlin Institute of Technology immigrated to the US in 1993. I um, studied for the foreign pharmacy equivalency examination, which I'll go in detail later in this um, talk. I was able to get licensed um, in 1995 as a registered pharmacist in Texas. And after that I worked um, and started off in hospital pharmacy as a pharmacy technician worked in home health, office infusion, retail pharmacy, and then decided that I need to go back to hospital pharmacy because that's what I liked the most. So um, hospital pharmacy was my base and I went back to school to get my master's in pharmacy administration because I wanted to be an operations manager or operations director of a large hospital or a director of pharmacy in a small hospital. That is my career goal. Um, so. I got a call from Memorial Hermann Hospital in um, 2006 um, to be a supervisor um, in a pharmacy. And then I continued there and became uh, the manager of, uh, of pharmacy operations and then later director of pharmacy operations at Memorial Hermann Hospital. Uh, so a little bit about the hospital itself. Memorial Hermann Hospital is um, about a thousand licensed bed hospital with an average census of about 850. Um, and it's a level one trauma center. We do about over a hundred surgeries and uh, we have about 60 OR rooms. Our specialty includes um, trauma, neurosciences, oncology, pediatrics, transplant, heart and vascular diseases, and um, many, many other. In the pharmacy department, 
we have close to 300 individuals. Um, that's close to 280 FTEs or full-time equivalents. Um, have over 100 pharmacists and over 150 pharmacy technicians. So a lot of pharmacy distribution, medication distribution work is done by technicians and the pharmacists oversee the job. So the, the Bureau of Labor Statistics um, of the US Department of Labor um, shows that there are 322,000 positions um, today um, for pharmacists, but um, they have projected 2% decrease over the next 10 years. And that's mainly because of um, the mail order pharmacies and um, the use of pharmacy technicians more and more. Uh, so they're projecting a slight decrease. But at the same time, um, we also see that there are a lot more pharmacy schools and we get a lot more pharmacy graduates. So there's a little bit of a saturation at this point for pharmacists. Uh, the pharmacy profession is regulated by um, NABP, National Association of Board of Pharmacy, um, and the individual state boards of pharmacy. So I can say it's highly regulated. Uh, you cannot just walk into a pharmacy and buy what you need. Um, you definitely need to show a prescription. And a lot of it is because the payer is the insurance company or the Medicare. So most of the payment is behind the scene and um, you only make a co-payment. And uh, so it has to be done properly. So there has to be a prescription um, and the pharmacist will not dispense without a prescription if it is a legend drug. So there are over-the-counter drugs and prescription uh, drugs and controlled substances. So definitely controlled substances, you need those kind of documentation as well. Manufacturing is uh, regulated by the FDA. The FDA is responsible for uh, protecting the public health by ensuring the safety, efficacy, and security of human and veterinary drugs. Um, that includes biological products. Let me go over the, the different kinds of pharmacy we see here in the United States. Mostly what we see is the retail pharmacy, like CVS and uh, the Walgreens um, and all the different chain um, pharmacy stores. Um, so that's what comes to, comes to everyone's mind when they talk about pharmacy, but there's more to pharmacy than that. There's compounding pharmacy. Now compounding pharmacy is where uh, the, the specialty compounding is done um, like uh, creams and ointments or flavoring for pediatrics. But there's also the um, sterile products, uh, products compounding. Um, there's separate licenses for that. Um, but um, um, that's also highly regulated. We'll come to the hospital pharmacy, but home health care uh, was also a very flourishing area where a pharmacy uh, um, support was needed. Um, there was a time in the US, I think about 25, 30 years ago, where the hospital stay was very long. And uh, the payers decided that that was too long, it's getting very expensive, and uh, they needed to provide care um, for a shorter duration in the hospital. And if uh, continued care is needed, that would be continued at home. So home health care was budding at that time in the late 1900s, um, um, 1990 and so on. So pharmacy um, was needed in these home health care um, uh, companies where medication was prepared and sent to uh, the patient's home, where a nurse would teach the patient to self-administer medication and the pharmacy, a pharmacist would prepare the medication and send it over. And then there are specialty pharmacies. Uh, specialty pharmacies uh, focus on high cost, high touch medication therapy for patients with complex um, disease states. Medication in specialty pharmacy range from oral medication to cutting edge injectable or biological products. Now, the key difference between the specialty and retail pharmacies are the conditions treated and the medications dispensed. Uh, so like I said, the specialty pharmacy um, works on expensive and tailor-made medications. So I got an opportunity to work in most of these 
areas and um, later decided to settle down um, in hospital pharmacy. So I'll go a little bit in detail about hospital pharmacy. Um, there are ambulatory care pharmacies associated with um, or embedded in the hospital, but um, <clears throat> there are um, mostly what we do is um, um, inpatient pharmacy. In outpatient pharmacy or the ambulatory care, um, after the patient's discharge from the hospital, a discharge prescription is filled um, for a sufficient amount of time, or the prescriptions are transferred to a retail pharmacy like the CVS or Walgreens. Um, we also have ambulatory infusion centers um, embedded with the hospitals where the patients come in for periodical infusions, uh, so called, such as um, chemotherapy or other specialty infusions. So they don't need to be admitted to the hospital but they can come in, get their infusion, and um, be discharged or leave, or leave if it's not admitted. But in patient, <clears throat> pharmacy is heavily involved um, in the distribution of medication, um, or actually it's the sole responsibility of pharmacy for the distribution of medication. But a lot of people are involved. So a hospital like ours um, with a thousand bed, uh, we have about 300 employees um, in the department. So it's a 24 seven operation and uh, the patients do not bring their own. If they do, that is only given if we do not carry, in, carry that same medication in the pharmacy. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about formulary and non-formulary medication. Um, the hospitals decide what can be distributed through the hospital pharmacy and they create a list of medication that we call formulary. And if the medication is not included in that for various reasons, it'll be non-formulary and they'll require additional um, um, orderings or, or uh, needs uh, to order. Maybe if it's their own patient's own medication um, that the patient cannot get elsewhere, that'll be brought in, verified by a pharmacist, and then given to the patient. Otherwise, everything is distributed through for the hospital um, purchasing stream uh, because we need to keep the integrity of the medication we distribute um, through pharmacy. So the purchasing is done by the pharmacy de department. So most of these tasks are done by pharmacy technicians, um, medication purchasing. In a hospital of our size, we do a um, we have a budget of about seventy million dollars uh, in medication purchasing um, in one year. So that's a lot of medication we bring in, and we store that um, in the pharmacy or on the units. Um, so it is not um, a unit based um, storage, but we keep that in medication distribution cabinets called there are different brands like Pixis or Omnicell. Um, but the nurses, nurses cannot go and get those medication without an order. But if there's an order for the medication, they'll be able to pull it under the patient's um, profile. There are medication that can be overridden or without an order, but an order will have to be presented within the 24 hour time period because it's only taken um, in an emergency and that's strictly monitored through pharmacy. We wanna make sure that the nurses don't pull medication without proper orders. Uh, so storage is completely guarded by a pharmacy and uh, pharmacy technicians oversee the purchasing and storage. But all of pharmacy technicians work is overseen by a pharmacist. Uh, the preparation distribution for the pharmacy technicians spend a lot of time preparing and distribution of the medication. Um, and the clinical intervention or the clinical decision-making is done by uh, the pharmacist. The pharmacist help, with, help the physician uh, with the ordering um, and appropriateness of medication, the dosing and all of that. Um, but uh, it, like I said earlier, the, the technicians prepare and distribute medication, but on every step a pharmacist um, validates their process, um, whether it is an IV preparation or non-sterile preparation, and the pharmacist checks it. And lately in Texas and many other states, um, we have what we call tech check tech. Uh, so technician can check another technician's work and that's approved. But those um, check tech, tech check tech technicians um, are um, certified by individual pharmacy 
and only those technicians can check another technician's work. And then there's a management um, department, um, uh, the whole uh, man individuals of management team managing the, the department. So um, when you have a large department of 300 people, um, it becomes a little a major task to manage the employees. Uh, so there's a lot of involvement with um, human resources and employee health in managing the employees. Um, the, we follow uh, the ISMP, Institute of State uh, Safe Medication Practice, and we work with healthcare systems and practitioners to advocate for patient safety and promote safe medication practices. Um, so quickly going over the, the medication flow, uh, we procure medication, um, we store medication in the pharmacy and in the, the cabinets, um, the compounding and repackaging of medication, medication distribution, and then the credits, uh, the, usually the charges are done when the medication is um, issued to a, or a patient, but if the medication is not used, it's returned to pharmacy and uh, we credit uh, the patient for, for that charge. And if the medication sometimes, if it expires or if it is expected to expire, we can return most of these medication back to the manufacturer for a credit and we utilize a reverse distribution uh, process to do that. All of this process documented clearly well. Um, I wanted to show a picture of the dispensing cabinet that I talked about. Um, the medication is stored um, under security so no one can open it without proper validation. Um, so the users are governed by pharmacists also, pharmacy department. And um, uh, the pharmacists um, do the order verification and um, the order entry part of it and the final product check. Uh, the pharmacist, pharmacy technician, they, um, they oversee the purchasing and storage and preparation distribution. So here's the picture of the Pixis machine that I wanted to show. Like I said earlier, all of this information is now available um, online. I just wanted to act as a guide if anybody had a question on how medication is distributed in the hospital pharmacy. Um, and I will be available for any discussion even later. Let me go over license and registration. A certified pharmacy technician license is required to, pharmacy, to practice as a pharmacy technician. Um, in the state of Texas. There are states within the United States where that is not required. I think about 21 states require a CPHT license or a certified pharmacy technician license. In Texas, um, you're required to have a PTCB license, that is a pharmacy technician certification board license to, in order for uh, the, tech, the individual to be licensed as a CPHT or certified pharmacy technician in the state of Texas. Um, but more and more states are embracing that idea and um, are requiring pharmacy technicians to be certified. Of course, a to practice as a pharmacist, a license is required as a, um, for, as a registered pharmacy, pharmacist. And both pharmacy, pharmacists and pharmacy technicians are required to have continuing education uh, to maintain their license. The pharmacy, pharmacists require 30, hours of continuing education every two years. So when your license is renewed, it's for two years. Well, for pharmacy technician, there are community college courses available, <clears throat> which is very short term. Uh, those are ranging from six months to a year. Uh, but at present, you can challenge the examination and, um, and without any formal education, you can um, work your way through the exam and, uh, and get licensed but an IV preparation certificate is needed for a hospital pharmacy job. Um, but in retail pharmacy, it's not a requirement. IV preparation is not a requirement. But a lot of pharmacy uh, pharmacies, uh, the retail pharmacies are requiring the technicians to be um, um, certified for immunizations, particularly in the onset of um, COVID. Uh, the technicians are administering vaccines um, in, the, in the retail pharmacies. Uh, but in institutional pharmacies, like I said earlier, technicians have a major role to play. So we have over 150 technicians um, taking care of medication distribution, preparation and distribution of medication um, mainly, and a lot of it's handled by pharmacy technicians. 
the registered <clears throat> registered pharmacists um, in um, in the U.S. are required to complete a doctor of pharmacy degree. Uh, so this is done in a four-year program at a pharmacy school. Many schools also offer dual degrees, um, so students can complete a PharmD degree alongside an MBA um, or an MPH or even a PhD. So the dual degree programs are out there and uh, there are numerous specializations that can be pursued either through studies or after completing a PharmD degree, including critical care, compounding, nuclear, oncology, pediatrics, infection disease, and so on. So um, the, before they apply for the pharmacy um, license, I'm sorry, the ad, entrance examination, or we call it PCAT, uh, there's a two year um, pre-pharmacy uh, requirement, and then there's a four year of PharmD program. And after the PharmD program, um, students go on to get their one year or two year residency. Uh, so to work in a hospital these days, the residency uh, is pretty much a requirement, um, a one year or two year residency. And in order for the pharmacist to enter into pharmacy management, a two year management uh, residency is highly sought after. Uh, so these are the, more, uh, the, the developments in pharmacy. Uh, when you are a pharmacy graduate from the United States, what about the foreign pharmacists? So there is a foreign pharmacy graduate equivalency certificate. And um, let me go over to nabp.pharmacy. That is a very friendly site that gives you a lot of information. Uh, so let me stop sharing and uh, share again the um, website of um, NABP. And like I said earlier, a lot of this information, or almost anything you want, is available on the World Wide Web um, these days. So things have improved. And let me see if I can share um, NABP's site. Just a second. Okay, so nabp.pharmacy is where you can find the information that you're looking for as a foreign pharmacist. So FPGEE is Foreign Pharmacy Graduate Equivalency Examination. So you take that exam and um, uh, the details of that is given in this um, NABP website, it gives you the details for registering for the examination, preparing for the examination, practice exams and all that. But more information is given through this link. So let me go through this page uh, slowly. So it gives you the details for registration of examination, the deadlines, uh, preparation for exam and practice exam and so on. So there's a lot of information in this site. But if you go to this link that shows FPGC certification and completion of it, it's particularly talks um, to the foreign pharmacist, pharmacists, how to obtain um, uh, the equivalency of what you learned in your country uh, coming over here. So I had the opportunity to train and precept several students from different countries like China, Philippines, India, Ethiopia, and uh, some other countries. Um, and I think once one student came from Saudi Arabia. So they all followed the same pattern. Uh, like I did, um, I completed the foreign pharmacy equivalency examination. And this site gives them all the information you need uh, about the steps, submit your application and degree credentials. Um, the one thing that I see of particular interest is that um, if you completed your pharmacy education before um, the January, First, uh, no, January 1st, 2003, you were only required to have a four year degree. And after January 1st, 2003, you're required to have completed a five year program, which is essentially a PharmD program. 
So that's the major difference that I see. And this uh, requirement for TOEFL and, and, um, and another requirement is uh, 1500 hours of internship. So after you take the foreign pharmacy examination um, and in order for you to be eligible for that, you need to complete your TOEFL. And um, once you complete that, you, you need to complete 1500 hours of internship. And then the state will give you a license if you pass the NAPLEX, N-A-P-L-E-X. Uh, that's a pharmacy licensing examination that's administered by individual states. So these are the formalities and I'll be more than happy to share any other information that's needed. I want to be mindful of the time you're approaching 30, mi 30 minutes. Um, so thank you for listening patiently to my presentation and I'm opening it up for students. If you have any questions, um, I will be more than happy to answer. And if you don't have any right now, I'll leave my details with uh, the leaders of uh, the KPGA. So you can contact me if you have any questions. Um, I'll stop here for questions if you have any. Thank you, uh, Mr. John Samuel, for pondering very valuable information uh, related uh, to the topic. And now uh, the session is open for discussion. I request the participants to make use of this opportunity to interact with the speaker and clarify your queries, please. So while you think about questions, I can answer one that was already asked of me even before the seminar started. That was about pay practices. Um, how much do pharmacists make and how much do pharmacy technicians make? Um, so pharmacy technicians in our organization, they make anywhere from $15 to $35 an hour. Um, so in every year, an employee works 2,080 hours. So it just multiply by 2080. And um, so, so roughly the range is about $45,000 to $75,000 for the pharmacy technicians. There are different levels of pharmacy technicians. That's a level one um, entry level. Without any experience, we train them. And um, after a year or two, they get promoted to level two, level three. And specialist technicians are the ones who make the most. And they're the ones in that higher range of $60,000 to $75,000 a year. Um, and farm, that's pharmacy technicians. And pharmacists make anywhere from, I want to say $50 an hour to $100 an hour, depending on the specialty. So I talked about the um, postgraduate um, um, residency, the one year and two year residency. So there are a lot of sought after positions like the oncology pharmacists or transplant pharmacists, very much in demand. And they make towards the high end of it over the years of experience. Uh, pharmacists, when they start off as a fresh, brand new pharmacist, they make close to $50 an hour or close to $100,000 a year. Sir, I had uh, one. Uh more clarification, like you were mentioning about the degree what you had before 2003. In that case, four years was uh, sufficient. And after 2003, uh, five years is mandatory. Can you uh, just pour some more light into this aspect? Like, Yeah, so I found that um, in the um, web page of um, NABP, the word, uh, but if you so, what I found from there from my research is that farm D or sorry, B farm was sufficient um, to challenge the NABP uh, requirement. Um, if you were a graduate from up to year 2000 or December 31st, 2002. So, if you're a graduate after 2000 or January 1st, 2003, you're required to have a five year degree, which is a farm D. Um, and that's not just India and anywhere, any other country, there's a, that's, a, that's the requirement to uh, be able to accept the NABP, I'm sorry, the FPGE uh, C uh, requirement. Okay. So somebody had raised the query whether uh, after 2003, if it is a B farm and uh, 
an additional M farm where you have four plus two years? Is it acceptable? So that's a very good question. I looked into that too. Um, so that's considered to be two different programs. B farm is a single program, a standalone program, and M farm is a separate program. What they want is a continuous five-year program. So it has to be a single program. The four plus two will not work. Um, there was an example shown that some countries allow, um, there's a two-year pre-pharmacy -pharm program, and then there's a four-year pharmacy program. And if they complete the two-year program, they're admitted into a second year of the pharmacy program. So essentially they would have completed six years. But even then, it's only considered a four-year program because the major program is four years. So to reiterate, uh, the M farm is considered to be a separate program. It's not a continuous program. Thank you. Um, somebody had... Uh, so the retail... So I, I read the yeah. question yeah. about uh, the retail business. So I have some personal experience. My brother-in-law um, started his own um, pharmacy. Uh, the problem he is facing is that he's facing a major challenge from the larger retailers like CVS and uh, Walgreens. Um, so he is not able to sell the medication for any significant profit because it's all, it all depends on how much you can buy the medication. So you don't really have much of a buying power if you're a standalone pharmacy. Um, you have to be part of a larger buying group. But if there's no sufficient purchase, um, you're not able to buy the medication uh, to sell for a reasonable profit. So retail pharmacy um, of, of, on an individual level is not very promising, but uh, there are, some um, pharmacies, uh, it used to be in the past where you could be part of a franchise, like the medicine shop. Uh, they would sell medicine as well as other cosmetic items in the pharmacy and make some profit. But that is not very lucrative in uh, the United States. Uh, that, is, um, that is flourishing in, the, in areas like Canada. But in the United States, because of the presence of um, Rite Aid and CBS and Walgreens, it's become more and more difficult for individual pharmacists to be successful in retail business. But there are, I've, I've seen success in the areas of compounding pharmacy, um, where if you have enough dermatologists and others to support your business, uh, then there's enough compounding to be done um, to be viable in the marketplace. Otherwise, uh, private business is not very successful from my experience. We do have post baccalaureate PharmD program. Somebody has uh, raised query regarding that, whether it becomes equivalent to a five years program or they too uh, will have that limitation. Um, I'm not very familiar with that. Um, Again, it's a, um, it's a B farm four years, and after that they can complete their farm D, like they enter into the third year of farm D and they complete that particular program. So, okay. post baccalaureate. Yeah, so I'm not I'm not very familiar to speak about that. Um, I would direct you to the NABP uh, website. That is a very resourceful page. So NABP dot pharmacy. Um, gives you all kind of answers for any questions you may have. I see another question about if PG is exam after completion of Form D, if you're still in India. Um, um, the examinations that I can think of that I know is only um, being conducted in the United States. So you, uh, there are no um, centers outside the United States that I, that I know of. So again, I direct you to nabp.pharmacy for more details on that, or I can just search and send some information to you um, after this presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, next question was like, can the form of foreign pharmacy graduates do residency programs there? Um, it's, I want to say it is possible. But again, residency itself is very, very competitive um, these days. So 
there aren't that many seats available for the graduates that graduate out of um, United States colleges. Uh, for example, University of Houston, um, there are several graduates coming out every year, but in our hospital, we only have eight PGY1 uh, positions. And I think right now we have two or three PGY2. So there's uh, less supply and more demand uh, for the residency programs. So you're competing with um, the students that are here. Um, so the opportunities are limited. So, but I still don't want to say that the opportunities are not there, but it's very competitive. So, uh, Dr. Manoj, there is a question from Divya. Uh, Divya. Okay, sir. It's a previous, previous question, please. Previous Go question. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so can we uh, directly take part in the FPGE exam right after the completion of the PharmD program in India? That's a question. Yeah, that's right what I was uh, alluding to earlier. Um, yeah, it's valid. <coughs> uh, is so the MBA the program from India useful for entry as pharma managers in USA? MBA program from India. Okay, so it depends on what area of pharmacy you're talking about. In retail pharmacy, um, there are positions that are um, open for non-pharmacists, um, but they are managers um, managing certain territories or aspects of purchasing um, in, uh, in retail pharmacy. Um, so MBA may be beneficial, uh, but if you were to work in hospital pharmacy, uh, if, um, RPH or registered pharmacist license is required in most cases. So there, in the hospital pharmacy, that is not um, a viable situation. I also see the other examination, um, other question about um, pharmacy industry. And I have friends working in pharmacy industry that are not licensed as a pharmacy graduate, oh, I'm sorry, um, RPH in the United States. So that field is open. And there are a lot of um, manufacturing companies in the New Jersey um, sector uh, where uh, farm, B farm graduates um, find positions in those manufacturing units. Uh, uh, on the same line, somebody had put the question like, so what's the minimum qualification for working in the manufacturing sector? Again, it depends on the position that you're seeking. So there are chemists, analysts, um, so many different jobs in the manufacturing area. I'm not very familiar with that um, area. I think one of the speakers coming up in uh, weeks from now um, is going to talk more about manufacturing. Um, so that's not my expertise, and I don't want to comment on that. Sadish uh, is working in pharma industry there, no? Sadish, yes, Sadish. I don't know if he's going to give a webinar um, as part of this, but he would be a good resource to have from the pharma uh, manufacturing um, arena. Hey, we will so. try to cover that uh, aspect also in the near future. Yeah, because that's a completely different yeah. um, sector. And it's, it's important to speak to someone from that area. Um, and I, I hate to give wrong information because I am not a specialist. Like someone had asked for asked about research earlier, and uh, I'm not familiar with that either. So, like I said, it's so vast. Um, I can talk a lot more about hospital pharmacy, but not about manufacturing or research. So, another question is: PharmD graduates have to complete an internship during their program during their PharmD program here. So, whether it is, is it necessary to do an extra uh, 1,500 hours of in, internship? For, to appear for the NAPLEX examination? Okay, that's a very good question. Um, so appearing for NAPLEX, um, so let me break it down. The foreign pharmacy graduate equivalency examination is a test given by NABP. And for that, you need to complete a five-year PharmD program. So that whatever you did in that five-year pro program um, takes care of the basic requirement for that examination. 
Now for you to be licensed in that state, each state has separate um, requirement. Texas has 1500 hours of internship needed. So that it needs to be done here in Texas under a preceptor who is licensed in Texas. There are states that require 800 to 1000 hours. Um, um, so it's not always 1500 hours. But to answer your question, the internship that you completed in Farm D um, will not be counted towards your 1500 hours of internship um, uh, to be licensed as a pharmacist. So there's a question from uh, YouTube, minimum qualification for working in the manufacturing side. Um, I defer that to Sadish or someone else who may take it up later. I'm not very familiar with the minimum qualification for manufacturing. I think uh, that covers, uh, is there, is, are there any other options for being a clinical pharmacist with B Farm? Uh, like, uh, can they do any additional course and becomes qualified and get qualified for being a clinical pharmacist? Uh, so, so if, the, if you ask me a question about um, being a clinical pharmacist in a hospital, you definitely would need a, a um, RPH license. So that is the, the basic minimum requirement to work in a hospital pharmacy as a pharmacist. So if you have that, uh, so let's say you get your equivalency examination, get that equated and you become an RPH. In order for you to work as a clinical pharmacist, now all the positions that are now in the hospital pharmacy is deemed to be clinical uh, because it's a clinical position. But if your question is about a clinical specialist uh, to be working in, in the hospital, we have specialists with one year or two year internship, um, so residency. And that residency program um, takes them, gives them or equips them with additional uh, training to be able to work as a clinical specialist, whether it is transplant, oncology, critical care, um, emergency center care, and any of that. So, that's a special training that's needed, but that's usually done after your uh, obtaining your fund, I'm sorry, um, RPH um, license. All, all good questions. Um, I wish we had more time. I think we are approaching 9.30, yeah. so yeah. in two yeah. hours, <laughs> twice the time that we originally planned. I appreciate yeah. all the questions. No, and, it's yeah. only 8.30, eight sir. Eight oh, 8.30, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sir, one more question from YouTube, sir. Uh, Sadish, uh, you can read it. Sir. So, uh, what's the uh, qualification for a pharmacy technician? Okay, Pharm so let me uh, go over the pharmacy technician program. Um, you don't really have to have any major qualification. So, what helps us as a ph pharmacy professionals, whether it is D farm, B farm, or uh, farm D, we have some exposure to uh, calculations and and uh, um, the dosing and even the names of medication, the different uh, classifications of medication and so on. So that is helpful. But as a prerequisite, the only requirement is that you're a high school graduate. And, and you can challenge the examination as of today. So you don't really have to take any formal training, um, but this training is helpful. Um, whether you go to a community college and um, get trained there, uh, because um, with the high school, um, in high school training or high school certificate, there's not a whole lot of um, information out there, but there's sufficient information that you already know um, to be able to navigate through the, um, the calculations that's needed to pass the, the examinations in pharmacy uh, technician program. Um, so to answer the question, no major requirement other than you, have, you can show the equivalency of a high school um, diploma, and then you should be able to take the test and pass it um, in most states at, at this time. To work in a hospital pharmacy, um, you're also required to have an IP certification, which is done um, as an outside course uh, that may last anywhere from 
two months to six months, uh, depending on how you take that course. <laughs> So uh, taking into consideration the difficulty level for attending the FPGEE exam, so what are the uh, preparation, how the mode of preparation has to be and how many attempts can a person take to clear that examination, FPGEE? Okay. So um, I did some reading and in that um, NABP website. Uh, what I find is you can take the test once a year. So it is only given once a year at this time. It used to be once a year that they changed to twice a year. Now it's again back to once a year. Um, you can take two practice tests <clears throat> for a fee. The degree of difficulty is pretty high. Um, you have to have enough knowledge um, to be able to complete a pharmacy course. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so it's fairly difficult. Um, so I, just to draw some parallel, I have friends um, and coworkers um, from different countries that um, have completed the pharmacy education in their respective countries and um, still have not cleared the examination after many, many attempts. And then there are people like me <coughs> who came here um, and, and took the examination. Um, so um, I'm not saying I'm any smarter than them <laughs> or any of that, don't get that idea. Uh, but um, it is, um, it's a fairly difficult exam. Um, and it equates with the students from this country. So usually whenever you take a test, there's a um, set of students from the local colleges that take the exam also. And your grade, your score is compared to theirs. And that's how it's equated. Sometimes you can get more than 100% because um, the scores of your score may be better than the, uh, the standard um, score that they need um, to have. Um, so when you ask about difficulty, it all depends on, so I was never a great student as I was an average student. Um, so if I were to pass, um, I think it is something that um, most students should be able to appear and pass, but a lot of people get bogged down with um, the TOEFL requirement. I think that's where um, uh, people get into uh, trouble um, and they have gone to different countries to take the test and uh, I know of several pharmacists who completed that uh, that requirement uh, from another country uh, which was probably easier for them to take. So uh, what are the special works assigned to pharmacists during this COVID uh, scenario? Very good questions. I am um, I want to touch on that, but uh, didn't get an opportunity to create a slide for it. So we'll talk a little bit about um, um, the COVID. Uh, um, so mostly what we faced was, so two years ago when we did not know much about COVID, um, it was a scare. Um, if somebody came in with, um, with COVID, um, the expectation was that, um, they, their, the prognosis was pretty bad. It was very critical. So um, there were a lot of, um, I know of at least a few cases in our department uh, where the technician, they're mostly technicians, not pharmacists. They were told not to work in the hospital, in the hospital pharmacy anymore uh, from, by their parents, by their grandparents. They did not want to lose their child. Um, so there were, some, there were some scare, there was some scare among our employees uh, the department was asked, so we were not really at the forefront, but we were at the forefront of distribution of vaccines. Um, our hospital was the first hospital to receive the vaccine in the Houston area. And uh, we distributed the vaccine to the vaccine clinics and we had pharmacists present in the vaccine clinic day in and day out, um, distributing these vaccines. We were not administering those vaccines, but there were several pharmacists who were vac vaccine certified. They could administer vaccinations. So the, the, those pharmacies, pharmacists at that time, you know, there were not that many nurses because the nurses were needed at the bedside. Um, so there was a scarce of uh, people who could administer the vaccine. So those pharmacists and even pharmacy technicians were asked to go to the forefront and uh, administer vaccine, distribute vaccine, draw out the doses. So the Pfizer vaccine had to be diluted 
And this day, there were massive camps where we would see thousands of patients coming in every day. Um, so we were all, we also volunteered in that area, um, the big tents, big camps, to provide the support that the nurses needed um, or the community needed uh, for the vaccine administration. So that's the, the vaccine part. And of course, we kept all of that in pharmacy. There's cold chain custody. It has to be, it had to be kept at a certain temperature, sometimes below 70 degrees, negative 70, uh, below um, the refrigerator temperature and room temperature and monitoring that. Uh, so we kept all of that in the pharmacy and distributed um, um, based on CDC's guidelines. But on the other side, we had, um, um, decrease in surgeries. Uh, so one thing to talk about is work from home. Was it available? We never thought of having pharmacists work from home until then. Uh, but there were some um, positions that we could um, move away from the hospital to create more space, particularly for social distancing, where we had pharmacists uh, now separated out six feet away and we did not have all of our workspaces available. Um, so we looked into opportunities where they could work from home. Um, so a lot of pharmacists entered verified orders from home and got a printer in pharmacy. Um, our IT uh, team was uh, very instrumental in getting that done. The technicians, some of them were med history, medication history uh, technicians where they collect the medication history of those patients and they could do it from over the phone from home. So there were some positions that we could um, move flex out from the hospital to a remote position and we manage that. So from time to time, when the fluctuations happen, uh, we brought back all of them back to work in, to work in pharmacy. And then later uh, when the count went up, we resorted back to having some of them work from home again. So there was some fluctuation in that. So it was a, an interesting um, uh, scenario with, uh, with COVID in our department. Uh, there was a question like uh, going for a master's in pharmacy practice on pharmacology how will the opportunity of such uh, postgraduates of working in hospital sector is there an opportunity for them that's one of the questions um okay so i'll have to get some more insight about that question <clears throat> um going for a ph master's in pharmacy yeah. pharmacology um how will the opportunity of being worked so um, I have to resort back to my earlier comment about getting a pharmacy license. So you have to be primarily licensed as a pharmacist and then any additional training will be helpful. So if you have a pharmacology degree or a pharmacy, um, additional degree in pharmacy, all of that is very, very helpful. So I'll tell you from my experience, I came here in 2000, I'm sorry, 1993, and I had my B farm and M farm. So the M farm pretty much was useless. That was not really needed at all. So in order for me to get this equivalency examination, I did not really have to present anything about my M farm that I worked for. Um, so that was not helpful at all. In order for me to obtain the uh, foreign pharmacy equivalency examination and my RPH. But once I got that, the experience that I had from the training that I received for M farm, that helped me in my career. Uh, I never used my M Farm certificate anywhere in the US, but the experience was helpful for me. That's the reason why I wanted to join and get another master's from the United States, um, thinking that um, it may be different, but that was helpful because what I chose was pharmacy administration. So that gave me a trajectory of joining the hospital pharmacy leadership. Um, so, that is my experience. So again, uh, going back to that question, I think primarily what you need is the um, ability to get licensed here and then any other training would be of added benefit. Thank you. How many, how many times, times can we take NAPLEX in an year? NAPLEX, I, oh. <laughs> So uh, I, I want to say it's um, three or four times. So it depends on the frequency. You take the test and you wait for the results to come. And if you need to retake the test, you'll have to find a 
a location or a center for that. Uh, so there's a natural delay before you can take another test. So just because of that, I think you may be only able to take, take it two or three times a year. Um, the passing rate is pretty high. 92% of the applicants pass the NAPLEX examination. Um, so it's pretty high. Um, so if you have completed the foreign pharmacy equivalency examination, then the, the word on the street is that you'll be able to pass the NAPLEX. So um, you may not have that multiple times, um, hopefully. So I think um, most uh, all the queries that had been put forth by the attendees had been answered in a very satisfactory manner. I uh, take this opportunity to appreciate for the patience and the perseverance uh, shown by um, Mr. John Samuel in answering satisfactorily the queries put forth by all the attendees. And the speaker had given a much detailed account about the career advancement that's possible in uh, US. And he gave an account of how many, um, uh, an approximate of the pharmacy positions that exist in US, the types of pharmacy, the scenario of pharmacy, the overall process of certification, the registration process, and the equivalency exam that a person has to undertake over there. And uh, I'm sure that the gathering present are highly benefited and enlightened with the plethora of information uh, shared on this occasion and take this opportunity especially to uh, appreciate the efforts put in by KPGA for taking such a very valuable topic which is of immense use uh, to the budding pharmacists. And this is really a platform wherein you get a live opportunity to interact with the speaker who are having a live experience in the field and uh, can answer to the satisfaction of the attendees present in this. I once again take this opportunity to uh, appreciate uh, Mr. John Samuel for the wonderful presentation. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you all the office bearers of KPGA for giving me an opportunity to moderate this session. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I also want to say at this point that um, KPGA is doing a wonderful job. I wish I had an opportunity like this 25 years ago, but uh, things are different. And uh, today I see that there are a lot of leaders um, wanting to help the, the younger students um, to achieve their goal. And I want to be part of this as well. And I was talking to Nazir earlier um, about um, the membership and, and so on. I'll, I'll find out from him how, and how I can help uh, maybe become a panelist later um, to help out, or if you have any questions later that um, I can help with in my capacity. And um, uh, he will have my details if you need to reach out to me uh, through my email or phone. Um, I'll be more than happy to help. Thank you, okay, so thank, you. thank you very much, uh, Mr. John Shamul. He agreed that he will enroll as a member of KPG. Thank you very that's much. Fine. That, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, Sonu? Yes, sir. Nearly 200 participants were there over both the Zoom and the YouTube streaming platform, and more than half an hour was spent to answer the queries. So without any doubt, we have to say that it was truly an inspiring and highly informative and very interacting session for all of us. And I would like to thank our speaker, Mr. John Samuel, sir, and the moderator, Dr. P. Manoj Kumar, sir, for this great experience. Gratitude is the language of heart. I am delighted to invite the vibrant pharma regulator, Dr. Nishit MC, Joint Secretary, Kerala Pharmacy Graduates Association, and the Drugs Inspector of Malapuram District to propose the word of thanks. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Sunu. Good evening, one and all. Respected Chief Guest of today's function, Honorable MAD of Angamali Constituency, Rogium John, sir. Our beloved KPGA State President, Dr. P.K. Srikumar, sir. Our State Secretary, Abdul Nasir, sir. Speaker of today's webinar, Mr. John Samuel, sir. Moderator, Dr. P. Manoj Kumar, sir. Dr. K. Krishna Kumar, sir. Other KPGA members, distinguished faculty members, and dear students. On behalf of KPGA, I take this opportunity to propose a word of thanks to those who have 
directly and indirectly contributed to this webinar for making a resounding su success. At the outset, on behalf of KPGA, I extend our gratitude and thanks to our chief guest, Honorable MLA of Angamali Constituency, Roji M. Johnson, for accepting our invitation to inaugurate this webinar. Just spend some time from his busy schedule to grace this occasion. Today, we had an opportunity to hear his thoughts, and this will surely be going to encourage us in our future events. Your thoughts have enlightened our minds and have shown us a new path. Thank you so much, sir. I would like to thank our beloved president, Dr. P.K. Srikumar, sir, for his continued support and guidance for organizing events like this. Today, my words are not enough to express the gratitude to our president as he's deeply involved in implementing the action plan of KPGA one by one. Only with his enthusiasm and clarity of vision, we are able to start this webinar session with a great beginning. Thank you so much, sir. I'm very, very much thankful to our State General Secretary, P.U. Abdul Nasir, sir, a man with positive vibes and full of energy. He is the backbone of this association and stands always for the uplifting of the professions in the state. Only with this constant help and support and guidance, we are witnessing new initiatives like this for the benefit and betterment of pharmacy profession in our state, especially for the student community. Thank you so much, sir, for making this webinar series a unique one. I express my special gratitude to our guest speaker, Mr. John Samuel, sir, for his wonderful and mind-blowing presentation. No doubt, our students have got a lot of information which will truly help them in their life. We have no words to offer gratitude for your valuable presence here. Thank you so much, John Sir. I would like to place my hearty thanks to Dr. K. Krishna Gurma Sir to introduce the modules of this webinar series. We are very much thankful to you for your involvement in designing the modules and identifying the taste of students and recent trends in pharmaceutical education. No doubt it will be beneficial for all young budding pharmacists to choose your career options. Thank you, Krishna Kumar sir. Also, I mentioned the name of our ex-president, Dr. Sadish Kumar sir. He is always with us, encouraging us to do more programs for the betterment of profession and the welfare of students' community. Thank you, Sadish sir. We are immensely thankful to the moderator of this session, Dr. P. Manoj Kumar, principal of Delhi College of Pharmacy and Research, Rivandran. He is an experienced academician, researcher, and he moderated this session very well, sharing his views and worthy information. Thank you so much, sir. Now I would like to express my sincere thanks to the teachers who have joined on this platform. We have been fortunate enough to be backed by a team of very proactive and dedicated faculties from various colleges across the state. I am short of words for their involvement and continued support. Thank you all. I am immensely thankful to Master of Ceremonies, Srimadhi Sunu Beni, for her efforts towards anchoring of today's webinar. Her own ideas and elegance of explanation of everything I need to mention my deepest sense of appreciation. Thank you, Sunu. Finally, I would like to thank our budding pharmacists and the young and energetic pharma students for making this event a grand success. I hope this session was very useful, helping you to opt your career in future. This is just a beginning. You will witness the wide scope of pharmacy profession across the globe in the coming months. Thank you all. I also thank all the KPG executive members for your immense support for the success of all initiatives of KPGA. Finally, I would like to thank all of you present here for making the time to be with us today and helping us to make this event a grand success. Thank you, Vernandor. Good night. Over to you, Sonia. Thank you uh, so, so much. Sonia, you can add uh, some words on the next program. Eh? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. yes, sir. Okay. yes sir. Once again, I thank all of you for your valuable and active participation and patience throughout the session. I hope all of you will be benefited from the session. On behalf of KPGA, I invite all of you to the upcoming module on 6th of February, 2022 to understand the former career in Canada 
from Mrs. Sheba Vinci, Registered Pharmacist of Canada. Once again, I'm reminding all of you to utilize the opportunity and to grab your dreams. Chase your dreams and be a shining star in the pharma sector. Wishing you all the best. It's me, Sonu Benny, signing off. Let's all raise for National Anthem. Janagana mana adhinayaka jayahe Bharat bhagya vidhata Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravid Utkada Vanga Vindya Himachal Yamuna Ganga Utchala Jaladhitaranga Tavashubha Name Jage Tavashubha Ashish Maage Gahe Tav Jaya Gatha Janagan Mangal Dayak Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Jaya 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 He Thanking you all once again. Hope to see you on 6th of February. Thanking you.